Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Detola, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Inside Dentistry's Product Talk. We are virtually on location in Cincinnati, Ohio with Dr. Scott Sayer. Scott graduated from the Ohio State University College of Dentistry. He is a diplomat on the American Board of Oral Implantology and the International Congress of Oral Implantologists and has written numerous published articles and has lectured extensively throughout the world. And we are here today to talk to him about the gentle wave system from Sonendo. Scott, thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today. Thanks, it's great being here. Uh, and I uh, hope this uh, is really enlightening for everybody. Well, it certainly is. I mean, if you've, if you've seen Gordon Christensen speak in the last seven years, you know, he always likes to talk about what's new, what's coming, what's going to change the profession. And the gentle wave he's been mentioning for a long time. And, and of course, when you, I think, have something as, as revolutionary a product as this, it takes a little bit of time for people to wrap their head around uh, the investment and the change that they're making here. And uh, is this going to work? And I'm interested because you're a GP. And when you purchased your gentle wave, what problem or problems were you trying to solve for your patients? Well, as we all know, um, endodontics is a difficult, time-consuming procedure that most patients really don't care for. It can be painful. Uh, if they have an abscess, trying to get them numb is difficult. So we had this, this whole you know, mystique of, of root canals that the patients really don't like. So anything that's going to change this and make it better is good. Um, I wanted a better result and quite honestly, a better patient experience. And Gentle Wave gives us that. So, you know, it's the best improvement we have to date in endodontics. It uses a proprietary system to allow us to clean the entire canal three dimensionally. And um, it's, uh, it's just a great way to, uh, to do root canals at this point. I've been doing them five, six years now. I was one of the first general practitioners to, uh, to get involved with them. You know, it's funny. It's you, you mentioned root canals and the patient experience. I mean, there's really you would think that maybe wisdom tooth extractions would be the most feared thing in dentistry, but root canals almost become a punchline, you know, to jokes uh, about dentists and people not wanting to go to the dentist. Without a doubt, I think the root canal is the most feared procedure that is out there, which is a little odd because I think I'd rather have a single root canal done than have like twelve teeth prepped for a large bridge, it's certainly faster and easier, but you're right, the patient perception when they, when they hear that is slightly terrifying and it goes to show why a technology like this would be so welcome by patients. So I've mentioned, you know, Gentle Wave a couple of times now, but we actually haven't mentioned how it actually does what it does. Can you describe how that technology works, how it actually is able to, you know, clean and debride the tooth in a way different than, uh, than other technologies? Yeah, so this technology is, is quite interesting. You have a sealed system, and through that system, we introduce sound waves, so that high energy in that system allows for a, a vortices of flow, which is excellent in small spaces. And then we also degas all the fluids. You cannot believe how important that is. Every single practitioner, as we introduce sodium hypochlorite or other items we are creating little air bubbles and now this solution does not turn over it does not get into lateral canals it doesn't get to the apex wherever that block is and, and this is shown through science and videos and all kinds of things so um the gentle wave system degasses the fluids super important all of the fluids are set to a specific um, concentration. So all of these mechanisms working together with 50 to 60 times of circulation of these fluids during that procedure allows for complete cleaning of this tooth. And um, you know we have a tissue uh, dissolution video that is just fascinating that uh, shows how this works. Um, so it's really an in-depth piece of science that we're, we're getting to be able to use and, and clean this canal. Totally different than anything else. I, I guess that makes sense about the degassing. I, I never really heard that before, but when you think about a fluid, I guess, trying to get into a lateral canal, for example, that you haven't instrumented because you don't even see it, that if you had air bubbles in there, 
they, they might block the fluid from getting into the canal at all, but certainly if the air bubble let in, you would not certainly, the fluid doesn't seem like it would get all the way. You'd almost get like a little bit of a vapor lock or some kind of block from those bubbles. Are, is that why it's important to degas it? So you just have the fluid in there and don't have to worry about kind of the surface <laughs> tension of these air bubbles and how they might get in the way? Yes, it's vitally important, vitally important because you're exactly right. It's a vapor lock. It stops the fluid from flowing. If you take a fluid, let's say you take acid etch and you put it on the surface of the tooth and within you know microseconds, the etch that's against that tooth has been used, that chemical's gone. And unless you're actually agitating this, you're not getting new, same thing with this. Mm. If you go in and out of your canal with a syringe three or four times or whatever you're doing, that's it. We're doing this all the time. The fluid is constantly flowing, being um, next to the, to the tissue and the dental tubules constantly. So this flow is vitally important. And through the high energy, we're able to get into the smallest canals and openings. We actually can open, as you have you know, calcified, calcified tissues and things that are in there, the gentle way will actually find and open all of the small canals. You're gonna find more MB2s. It's, it's tremendous for that. You know, it's interesting. I remember being taught how to do endodontics in dental school. And we had a couple great, you know, instructors there, Dr. Cohen, Dr. Buchanan up at EOP in San Francisco. And I remember being taught, leave sodium hypochlorite in the canal for, you know, a minimum of 45 minutes. They used to say like cappuccino was the best thing for a root canal. Go get a cup of coffee and leave it sitting in there. But as, you, as soon as you gave me that analogy of the acid edge, it, it, it seems to me now, if you're going to put sodium, you know, if you're going to put it into the canal and just leave it there, that as it does its work, that stop, that chemical stops working there. And so it seems like a crucial difference is this constant turnover in these vortices that you're talking about. Is that part of the effectiveness of the system is constantly refreshing the fluid versus just leaving it to sit in there for 45 minutes? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Um, your, your solutions are not going to be as effective. They're not moving. They're not going anywhere. So you can leave it there for 45 minutes. If you've got an air bubble, it's not going past that to begin with. We right. also, with the, with the needle system and almost every single other system that's out there, even if, say you're going to clean the tooth with a laser, you're going to do this, you're, you still are flushing these fluids. Those are all positive pressure systems. Right. Meaning you're going to extravagate, you're going to get out the apex, right. sodium hypochlorite solutions, biomaterials, toxins, bacteria. And this is why our patients have so many post-operative problems. So one of the really fantastic things about this treatment, you don't have post-operative problems. Now, for a practitioner to say that, nobody's going to believe me. Go yeah. ask anybody who uses this. It is unbelievable. You're not getting the phone calls the next day. You're not calling and saying, how are you? I'm not doing well. You don't give more antibiotics. You're not giving pain medications. You're not giving the occasional steroids. Post-operative problems are dramatically improved. Yeah, that makes so much sense. I mean, the whole idea of positive pressure and possibly locking a syringe tip and, and getting, it, getting all that debris past the apex, including the sodium hypochlorite, does sound awful in that that negative pressure or those vortices coming up the other way totally, totally makes sense. It'd be like if you could start down at the apex and do positive pressure that way, if somehow you could yeah. get access yeah. to it without getting getting it in the mandible, it would make sense. So that seems like a, a huge step forward too. I mean, I'm sure you can still get a file four or five millimeters, you know, out of the apex and cause some soreness to a PDL. But what, what we're saying is more importantly, none of the fluid, none of the toxins, nothing else is getting shoved out into that space and forcing the body uh, to deal with that, which is um, pretty fascinating. Were you taught to do endo in dental school the same way that I was with just basic hand files and then just cold gutta percha? Yes, um, I was. And, uh, you know, I, I graduated in 77, a long, long time ago. And, um, you know, we were taught to enlarge the canals. That's mm -hmm. how you, you, cleaned and you cleaned and shaped them. Um, and we know that we weren't really getting after the three-dimensional anatomy at all by doing that. We were just weakening the tooth. Um, so endodontics knowledge is there, but 
we just weren't finding the instruments and the ways to get this clean. Um, so yeah, we used cold gutta percha and some sealant and prayed a lot. <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing it worked uh, as well as it did. I guess it's a testament to the human body and the immune system of most people that it actually worked. I mean, I've always joked that when I was in dental school, there was three canals and a maxillary molar. And 10 years later, I heard there was a fourth. And I was surprised that humans were able to evolve a fourth canal in just a short 10 year period <laughs> since I graduated from dental school. It didn't even make sense to me in an evolutionary, an evolutionary sense. So the clinical benefits for the patient and the clinician, I think, are, are pretty easy to see. Are there any other additional benefits to owning the, the general wave technology that you've discovered? Yes, yeah, so especially for the general practitioners, what I like is since we do 99% of one, one appointment, um, okay. another thing about endodontics that we know is you can lose the, the, the root canal system from the crown down. So if you have decay or a problem or it's taken six months to get the endodontist um, you know, finished and then the patient finally comes back for their crown and the seal's gone, those are problems. So as a general practitioner, we do the entire procedure. So we're going to remove the decay. We're going to do the root canal with uh, our general wave. We're then going to place any buildup and post, and we're going to do our crown same day. Everything's done all at once. So that's a tremendous asset to the patient. They don't have to come back. It's not multiple visits. We know now after using this for years and years in the research <coughs> that there is less pain, less post-operative problems. So we very... Um, easily know we can do one day treatment for this entire tooth. So that's a really great thing. We've already talked about the benefits for the patients in, gosh, um, you know, less pain and problems and all of that. The, the staff loves this thing because it's repeatable, it's dependable. You do the same technique on all of these teeth. And most of this can be delegated. The entire system, all, all the things you do, you know, filling the systems, that's all done by the staff holding the procedure instrument in the mouth, which takes you know several minutes, that can all be done by the staff. It's not invasive. It doesn't create any issues whatsoever. So uh, the staff really likes the procedure. It's trainable, repeatable. If you have associates, they all are gonna learn it very quickly. Okay. It's just a great, I can't say enough about it. And to your point about doing it in one visit, I remember doing a lot of research on crown and bridge, post and course, and long-term endodontic treatment. And I remember being very surprised that the primary, one of the primary indicators of whether or not you're going to have long-term endodontic success wasn't necessarily, you know, where the fill ended up, you know, how close to the apex or if it was short or if it was long. I mean, long-term endodontic success 20, 30 years was how well the crown was sealed onto the tooth and how well that crown was, that margin was maintained and whether or not there was recurrent decay that could get back into the system or not. And so for the GP to be able to do it and, and place the crown as soon as possible and have the tempering on the shortest amount of time, I think is a huge step forward too. It's not just about the profitability of doing things in one appointment, it's about the long-term endodontic success being tied intricately to whether or not the margins are good and whether or not the patient waits seven months to come back and have the crown done after the endo has actually been completed. So it sounds like I came into this thinking that General Wave was going to be a technology mainly for molars because of MB2s and other things, but it sounds like you're also saying in the hands of a GP, it makes uh, single canal teeth um, much quicker, much more efficient, and allows you to kind of do that all in one appointment as well. This isn't just for multi-rooted teeth. No, absolutely not. I use this on every single tooth, uh, molars, bicuspids, anteriors, it, it doesn't matter. Number one, if I know this is a better way to clean a tooth, why would I just go ahead and say, here, conventional endo, uh, fill it with this, and we're good? How do I know I've gotten all the tissue and everything out? Uh, so we use this on every tooth, um, on virtually every, every one that, uh, that needs to be done. We, we don't back it off. And it, at the same time, on those really intricate cases, um, it's going to clean and shape everything and, you know, you're, you're, you're done. So, well, if yeah. anyone watching would like to get more information on the Gentle Wave or attend a webinar, even better, go to gentlewave.com slash doctor. Scott, I really appreciate your insights and the time you spent with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been uh, great being here, and uh, I really appreciate you.
Well, that'll wrap it up for this episode of Product Talk. Thanks again to Dr. Sayer for spending some time with us today. So on behalf of Scott, myself, and all of us here at Inside Dentistry, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry.